Hello, welcome to the presentation on how gases exert pressure. Please pause the video and take a moment to read the learning objectives. Okay. Right, watch the green ball bounce around. Is there any pattern to its motion? Is it predictable? Right. A guy called Robert Brown observed this uh, through a microscope some time ago and he described this motion as completely random and he ni named this motion after himself. He called it Brownian motion. Uh, he was looking at a pollen grain uh, in water, but you can see the same motion with smoke particles in air. Uh, about a hundred years later, another guy came along and said that this motion was due to uh, invisible molecules of the gas or the liquid that these things were in bumping into the, the large object like the pollen grain or the smoke particle, moving it around. He also noted that the faster, uh, oh sorry, the hotter the gas or liquid this was happening in, uh, the faster this random motion was. Right, the combination of these ideas led people to come up with a particle model for gases. And in this case, the word model means literally like a model car or a model train. It's like a, a toy or something we make of the real world, a little model of the real world, to predict how it will behave. If I play around with a little toy car, uh, I can predict better how a real car will work when I get to drive a real car in the real world. Okay, so this is what uh, the particle model of a gas would look like if you uh, you can imagine if you had a large pollen grain in here, uh, it would be knocked about by these little molecules and you would never be able to predict which direction it would be moving in. Uh, right in this diagram, or uh, in this model, the black stuff is complete vacuum. Notice what happens if we increase the temperature in this model. The particles start to move around faster. Same if I decrease it, they'll move around slower. Okay, so this is what, what we mean by the particle model for gases. Okay. So let's move on to some other experiments with gases. Okay, uh, if you take a fixed volume of gas and you change the temperature of it and measure the pressure, you get plots on a graph. If you do this over and over again at different temperatures, you get this, uh, the following plots. When these experiments were being done, people had access to a range of temperatures, probably very high temperatures, but they couldn't really go that low, maybe down to about minus 20 or whatever the coldest was available in the local environment. Nowadays we can go much, much lower. As you can notice from these few plots here, it seems that they're in a straight line. You can extrapolate right down and it gets you to a temperature of minus 273 degrees Celsius. This is a magic number. This is absolute zero. If you use the particle model, then you would say that this is when all molecular motion stops. Uh, absolute zero is minus 273 degrees Celsius or we call it zero degrees degrees Kelvin. Kelvin is just a very similar scale to, to Celsius it's just that uh, it starts at zero at minus 273 degrees Celsius and it goes up in the same um, order of magnitude as, a cel as each degree Celsius would do. So one degree Kelvin is the same jump as one degree Celsius. Okay, if you also look at this graph, because it's a straight line, the gradient is constant, which means that you can state a new law, the pressure law. Pressure divided by temperature is equal to a constant, which is very useful. Uh, it's much more useful if we write it like this. The pressure before divided by the temperature before, so let's say at this point, is equal to the pressure after and the temperature after. So say this point. So this means that if I don't know one of these numbers, I can calculate it from the other three. For example, pause the video and read this question. Okay, I can use this formula to answer this problem. If I put in the pressures and the temperatures before, note that I have to put the temperature in Kelvin. I can rearrange the formula, uh, multiplying both sides by this 273 plus 32. Um, cancel out, gives me the uh, new pressure. Okay, so I was able to calculate the pressure when it wasn't known. All right, another example, uh, sorry, another very useful law can be determined by seeing how the volume of a gas changes with temperature when you have a fixed amount of gas at a fixed pressure. Okay, again, very similarly, we can put plots onto a graph and we get the same pattern emerging. It seems to be um, a linear relationship between volume and temperature. You can extrapolate down, it gets to the same point, the magic number minus 273 degrees Celsius or zero Kelvin. And we can state a new law, the um, uh, Charles's law. Volume divided by temperature is equal to a constant. Again, much more useful to state it as volume before divided by temperature before is equal to volume after divided by temperature after. 
Again, I'm sure you can have a go at this question now. Pause the video and have a try of this question. Remember that you must um, put the temperature in Kelvin. Okay, if you've had a go at that, then you should uh, realize that you can use Charles's law because the pressure remains constant, atmospheric pressure. Um, okay, so stick the numbers in, volume before, temperature before, volume after we don't know, temperature after we do know. Okay, um, multiply both sides by the temperature after, cancel out so you can get volume on its own, uh, and you get the new volume of 0.93 meters cubed. Great, okay. Let's have a look at a another law. Okay, so let's just imagine you take a bottle full of gas and squash it, making its volume smaller. I'm sure you can imagine that if you squeeze a bottle of gas, the, the pressure will increase. But why? If we use the particle model to explain this, let's take two, let's take a really simple example. Let's just take two molecules moving around at the same temperature, their speeds are the same, but one is in a smaller volume. Which one of these canisters is going to experience the most banging force? Well, let's see how often this one gets hit. One, two, three. This one gets hit much more often than this one does. So it's going to experience a greater banging force. Uh, pressure is force divided by area, so the pressure will have increased as well. Okay. This is Boyle's law, basically. But let's, let's make it quantitative so we can understand it better. Boyle's law states that pressure times volume is equal to a constant. In other words, no matter what, um, uh, if I keep the temperature constant, pressure times volume will always be equal to a constant. Let's have a look at this as an example. Okay, I'm going to select the option to keep the temperature constant here. Now, let's have a look at what the pressure is. It's roughly 0.8 atmospheres. Let's measure the volume. I'm actually not able to measure the volume with this. I can measure the length of this thing, but not the volume. Uh, but the length is proportional to the volume, so this whole thing will still work. Okay, so I've got a pressure of, well, let's say it's 0.82 and a volume of 6.6. .6. Well, a, a length of 6.6, .6, but as I said earlier. Um, so let's use 0.82 times uh, the, uh, the, the length or the volume, and I'm going to substitute it for 6.6, .6 gives me a value of 5.412. Right. If I change the uh, volume, and as you can see, this thing is cooling it down to keep the, the temperature constant, I should still find that the volume multiplied by the new pressure will give me the same value. So just get my calculator back. So I got 5.412 or something last time. Let's let's have a see what I get this time. So my new volume is 3.3, no sorry, 3.6. Multiply by my new pressure, 1.5, and it's 5.4. Okay, so I, I recommend you download this PHET piece of software. It's a fantastic website run by, I think it's Colorado, it's a Colorado based website. Google it, download it, I'll put a link in the uh, comments section. Okay, so we've just seen that pressure times volume is equal to a constant. Or we can do the same thing, right? Is a before and after equation. Pressure times uh, pressure times volume before, or PB VB, is equal to the same thing after. Uh, okay. Let's look at a simple um, example question. Pause the video and read this question very carefully. Attempt it yourself. Okay. So if we squash the box, it's going to reduce the volume, and uh, the molecule is going to have less room to sorry less room to move around, bumping into the walls more often, increasing the pressure. Okay, part two. You need to make sure you've read this carefully before you move on to this. Okay, pause the video, read the question. Right, this question is basically a before and after question. Um, that uh, the pressure before and the volume before, we don't know the volume after, that's what we're trying to find. And it told us earlier in the question that it's going to be, it needs an increase of 1.5 times atmospheric pressure. Rearrange the equation, multiply, sorry, divide both sides by 1.5 will give us um, uh, the, the new volume. The change in volume will be the original minus the final, so 20 centimeters cubed. And the final question, explain. As you increase the temperature, the average speed of molecules increases, and faster molecules strike the walls harder and increase the pressure. You could also say that they strike the walls more often. Okay, thank you for watching. Hopefully you can now, you should now be able to do these four points. Check out the second video if you want to look at the ideal gas equation. Thanks for watching.